The goal that uh, I will announce uh, on behalf of the European Commission uh, is a reduction of greenhouse gas uh, emissions of 40% compared to 1990. So let's be clear, already now we have a system that we have uh, introduced and was accepted by all our member states. It is a reduction of 20% of greenhouse gas emissions compared to 1990. We are on track to achieve that goal. But now, between 2020 and 2030, we are proposing to go for 40%. So it's indeed a very ambitious uh, objective, but I believe it's achievable. Of course, I cannot yet say that it's uh, um, fully uh, in legislation. Now we need to have the support of all our countries, but I believe they will remain very committed to an ambitious target. We have shown that it is possible to be ambitious in terms of uh, greenhouse gas uh, reduction and at the same time have growth. If you look at the figures, in 19, from 1990 to today, the European Union economy has grown by 45% while there was uh, emissions reduction of 19%. So those who say that uh, climate change policy um, is not uh, friend, uh, for the, friendly to the, to, the, to the economy, they are wrong. It's possible to combine ambition in climate policy with sound uh, economic policy. Of course, we have to look exactly the way the policy is going to be implemented. The European Union decision making uh, is the following. The European Commission makes the proposals, but at the end, for most issues, we need the agreement of the member states. We have 28 countries now as members and also the European Parliament. So there will be a discussion on the proposals of the Commission. That's not only recommendations, it's legislation uh, that we have put forward. Uh, on, uh, and, uh, in October, in the European Summit, the European Council. Uh, I'm uh, very, uh, let's say, confident about the outcome. I think the member states of the European Union will um, want to keep Europe um, um, with a leading position, but of course expecting others to commit as well. Because, let's be frank, the European Union economy is responsible for around 11% of global emissions. And of course, because of the emerging economies, our share is going to diminish. So it's important that others also contribute, namely uh, China, but also the United States. We have to have the major uh, uh, economies, those who uh, have more greenhouse gas emissions, to make their part of the, the effort. And uh, that's why the efforts of the European Union alone are not enough. We need to have a cooperative uh, agreement, a, a cooperative approach, and we need to work uh, together for an ambitious deal next year in the conference in Paris. President Obama's plan, uh, for, uh, from our point of view, goes clearly in the right direction. And it's critically important for the rest of the world that uh, uh, President Obama gets the support in the United States for that. Because uh, I've been following this the last 10 years, a debate very closely, and one of the arguments of some emerging economies, namely China, has been we will not do more if the Americans don't do more. That's very clear. And they argue that being themselves still a developing country, even if it's a very big economy, but it's true that uh, uh, in a growth uh, they still have to do a lot to reach the levels of the more industrialized world, they say they should not do the effort if the United States does not do also an important uh, contribution. So this is why we do need to look at this globally. And uh, that's the message I hope the high level uh, meeting in New York where I will uh, give a contribution with so many uh, presidents and heads of state like President Obama, but also President Xi of China. I hope that that effort of the Secretary General uh, of the United Nations uh, has a good result. I mean that all those countries commit to an ambitious agreement by next year. Uh, we still have time. Climate change is happening. We just now saw here in the United States, in New York, but also in other parts of the world, the climate march. The public opinion 
is uh, very aware that if we don't act now, afterwards it may be uh, irreversible, the climate effects of climate change. So it's a question of moral responsibility as well. We have towards the future generations. So I hope that the announcements of President Obama will be supported in the United States and that that will enable also others to come with more ambitious uh, targets. By the way, to be honest, China is doing much more than they were doing before. And I believe that the fact that we and the European Union and others have been pushing so, so much in this agenda has given a contribution for those historic changes. Regarding the commitments made by China, I can tell you at this moment that they are doing more than before and I very much welcome the fact. Now, I think I'm, uh, that they should do more as well in the future. It's their interest as well. You know that in the public opinion in China, uh, one of the most pressing issues is precisely the environment. According to some statistics, one of the most uh, uh, seen sites in uh, China is precisely a site that shows uh, the level of pollution in the main cities. So it's becoming a real social uh, problem uh, felt by the population. Uh, and the government of China, I've been speaking with different uh, uh, leaders from the current president, the current prime minister, but before also, I know that they are perfectly aware about this, this issue as, and they consider climate change one of the biggest threats for, uh, let's say, their sustainable development. So I would like them to, to accept more in terms of binding agreements. So far, China has been doing, uh, I would say, a big effort internally, and I welcome that fact, that China has been resisting uh, some kind of binding agreements uh, globally in terms of legislation. We believe in the European Union that the agreements to be credible need to have some kind of uh, legal uh, force and to have, of course, uh, an implementation mechanism of, of credible enforcement. 